So in this show there are two works that do reference um, surveillance and, and movement, freedom of movement or lack thereof in, in a very specific context of the United States and its history. One of them is called Glow, so it's a series of four sculptures which have light and are forms which are about human scale. And that refers to colonial lantern laws uh, that were present in Massachusetts, um, the state of New York and, and elsewhere, which stated that slaves that were, that were over a certain age, so usually around 14, were obliged by law to have a lit candle or lantern if they were not accompanied by a quote-unquote white person. So this law, which very much highlights the, the question of visibility and how that is really core with the idea of surveillance and how seen allows people to be counted, observed, tracked, controlled. Uh, so it's a very abstract kind of forms which are placed in the space and guide you also, your body also moves through the space and kind of encounter these four forms which for me are reminiscent of that kind of question of, of being in darkness but also having to be forced to, to be revealed through light and through visibility. And there's Always this kind of question, I think, in the, the, the triangles, for example, the triangular forms of movement as well. That's kind of this idea of, of moving forward in the form that I created. And other ones which are teardrop form, which also is kind of a moving forward of sorts. I feel like the tail of it is almost kind of the past and it's like we're moving towards a, a future movement or a, a liberty. There's a series of works called tripartite, which use shade cloth, which is an agricultural material. And what I find interesting about that material is that it's a very contemporary material. It's one that exists in different colours, so you'll see in the exhibition there's this kind of magenta, kind of hot pink that's in there. What they also are, they're just these huge filters, right? So they allow light to pass in, but they also restrain a bit, so they kind of filter out light as well. And so there was kind of this tension, I suppose, that's happening in the exhibition where there's a question of visibility and invisibility, this question of surveillance and surveillance, and how can one, through a scene and being visible, one could be accounted for. And that's, I think, even more evident in the work called Jalousie. And Jalousie is a sculpture which is made of two-way mirror and steel, in which there's these louviers or these lats, which kind of are reminiscent of window coverings in kind of colonial architecture, which allow one to have air that comes in and block out the sun, but also allows for circulation of air, but it allows one to also be standing behind these slats and to look out and not to be seen. And so for this particular sculpture, if you're standing on one side of the sculpture, your image and the rest of the exhibition is reflected uh, back at you. If you circumnavigate around it and you're on the other side, you're then able to see through this two-way mirror and to see the rest of the exhibition and the other people circulating in it and to be somewhat obscured from view. So the question of positionality and to always understand the context in which one is will also change their kind of question of power this visibility and invisibility. So there's not one static position. And I'm asking the viewer to also to explore that idea of their shifting identities, but their shifting positions of power as well. The other work is a paperwork, which is called a Green Book. It's more of a conceptual work, and it's looking at the archive of the Negro Motorist Handbook, which was published between 1933 and 1966. So an annual publication, um, which would make a listing of different places where African-American motorists would be welcomed. So those would be places to eat, sleep, get your hair cut, fix your car. And so it depicts a different geography and topography of the United States, being that this landmass is not navigated the same way depending on what one's racialization might be. So for this work, it's quite a simple process. I took scan of one year, 1961, and I chose that year because that was the first year of the Freedom Riders that were uh, making also a, a point uh, and also risking their lives to work towards the segregation of transport. So 1961 is the year I've taken, and what I've done is I've just erased all of the information apart from the name of the state and the actual address. So I framed these different pages of the, of the Green Book by state and leaving only the particular addresses that one would go to um, in a kind of a safe kind of island within, within the, the state. So it's a lot of um, white page and some GPS text, I guess, which would allow one to navigate if one would think of being 1961 and, and traveling through uh, the state in that time. 